but is doing well and is uh, continuing in rehab. We're going to pray for Larry Hall for healing in his body, for Carrie Porter, healing of cancer. We're going to continue to pray for Dan Betzer, pastor at uh, Fort Myers, Florida, First Assembly, recovering from a stroke. Praying for nearly 90 people associated with this church, unsaved loved ones and family members, praying for the salvation of their souls. We're going to be praying for our children, for our upcoming outreach, that through our back to school giveaway, through the outreach on Saturday, that some boy and girl will give their life to Jesus Christ. That's the whole purpose. We can have all of our activities, we can have our fun and games, but it all boils down to one purpose, and that's to see lives changed by the power of Jesus Christ. Would you lift your hands toward heaven and let's lift these needs to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, and Lord, we know that you are able, God, to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think, Lord, through every need that we face, God. Lord, you are the answer, and Lord, you're the answer to our sickness. You're the answer to our problem. You're the answer to our sadness, God. And Lord, we claim healing tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. For Lord, you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your straps we are healed. Lord, we pray that you would bring healing into these individuals' lives, God. That you would heal from cancer. That you would heal, Lord, from sickness and pain. God, that you would bring a restoration of health to those who are facing heart problems and stroke, God. Lord, through every sickness, through every pain, Father. Lord, we claim the healing of the name of Jesus Christ, God. And Lord, we just pray that you would save our unsaved loved ones, God. That you would bring a convicting power of the Holy Spirit upon their life, God. Lord, that they would come to know you and to serve you all the days of their life and to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you just because of who you are. For Lord, you are still the Savior. You are still the Redeemer. 
You're still the redeemer of mankind. You're still the rewarder of them that diligently seek you. And Father, we praise your name. And we give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to your name. For we are standing on
His presence. There is joy beyond measure. And at His feet, peace of mind can still be found.
For I inhabit the praises of my people. When you call out to me, I will answer you. If you are sick in your body, I am your healer. If you are weak, I am your strength. Call unto me and I will answer you. I am no respecter of persons. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. My love for you never changes. I will answer you because you are my child. And I give my life so that you may have life. I give my blood so that you may have everlasting life. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Thus saith the word of the Lord. Hallelujah to your name. <laughs> Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, we thank you, Father. <laughs> oh, you love the word of Jesus. <laughs> oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. Oh, there is a sweet spirit of the Holy Spirit in this place tonight. If you have a need of any kind in your life, whether a physical need, a spiritual need, you need guidance and direction, the Lord has said, call unto Him and He will answer. If I had something that I was in need of tonight and I needed an answer, I wouldn't wait another minute. I would come to an altar of prayer. Because that's where our strength is found in an altar of prayer. Whatever we need, it's found right here in an altar. We can try different things in this world. We've tried money. We've tried doctors. We've tried philosophy. We've tried education. But it all fades throughout eternity. But one thing remains that the love of God is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Whatever you have in need of God is able to supply. He's able to give rest for your weary soul. He's able to give you peace in the midst of the storm. He's able to give you wisdom in the midst of your trials and tests. Hallelujah to your name. Sing that second verse again. presence there is joy beyond measure and at his feet peace of mind can still be
Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have I not told you over and over again that I will be with you? I will guide you and direct you. I will sustain you and I will uphold you. In the time of trouble, in the time of the storm, I will be your shelter. I will be your strong tower. I will be your refuge. Whatever you need, it's found in me. I am the source of your strength. And I will stand upon my truth. For my word never fails. For my promise is yea and amen. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just reach out in faith. Whatever you need, just reach out in faith. Claim it in the name of Jesus. Claim that miracle in the name of Jesus. Claim that healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. The Holy Spirit is here to do a work in your life. Whatever you need, whatever you face, whatever difficulty you're going through, come to this altar. Let's agree in prayer. Let's pray and let God make a difference. Let the Lord change that circumstance. Let the Lord change the outcome. For we serve a God who is able. If you're hungry for the Holy Spirit, if you're hungry for an anointing of the power of the Holy Ghost, if you need healing, if you need strength, if you need direction, if you need the Lord to touch your life tonight, come to the salt. The Holy Spirit is here. The river of God is moving in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, let's draw near to him tonight. Oh, we thank you, Jesus.
I feel so strongly that there's someone in this sanctuary tonight that you need the Holy Spirit to make a change in your life, that you need the Holy Spirit to do something in your life, that you need God to give you strength, that you need the Lord to turn a situation around. And I know there's some different ones in the sanctuary tonight that you have loved ones who are unsaved, that we've been praying for the salvation of their souls. And what I want us to do tonight, let's come together at this front. If you find someone up here, now come and lay hands upon them and pray with them. And let's agree together. Come and let's find a place. And let's pray and worship Him in spirit and in truth.
I, I was talking to the choir and literally I was preaching to the choir at that sense uh, he was talking about the importance of worship what happens when we begin to praise him this is the answer when we begin to open up and to praise him and to worship him he inhabits the praises of his people when we call unto him he will answer we have a direct line straight to the throne room in heaven and what i want to do right now we are about to embark upon something new for this church in the month of september for some, i don't know how long y'all have done wednesday night bus ministry but we're going to continue to do that but we also want to continue to do more we want to reach this community we have lots of room there's lots of empty chairs we've got to do our part to fill it if we run out of room we'll go to a second service if we run out of room then we're just going to do what we have to do but the purpose is we've got to see souls saved 50 60 000 people in this county how many of them don't go to church those are the ones we're going after those are the ones that were pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. And what I want to do right now, I want everyone who is involved in teaching Sunday school, whether if you teach a Sunday school class, whether if you teach on Wednesday nights, if you help with the Wednesday night meal, Sunday school superintendent, van driver, van worker, if you're involved in any way in teaching Sunday school or bringing people here so that they can be taught or preparing a meal for them. Would you come and stand across the front of this church facing the platform? We want to pray for you. And we're going to ask God to strengthen you and empower you and to anoint you with a, a double portion of the Holy Spirit to do the work that God has called you to do. Because I believe before we can teach, we must first receive what we're going to teach. We must receive that anointing. We must receive that power. Every Sunday school teacher, every children's church worker, everyone that's gathered up here at the front church, would you stretch your hands toward them right now? Let's pray for the Holy Spirit anointing to be upon their life in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray that you will touch with the people. God, that you will anoint them and empower them, God. Lord, through every time we rise on that church man, Lord, every time he, he teaches God, that you will anoint him and strengthen him, God. Lord, to do the work that you've called him to do. Father, and Brother Coy's life, Lord. Every time he teaches him this adult Sunday school class, God. Lord, that the glory of God will be brought forth, Lord, through the teaching of your word, God. Lord, that lives will be changed, that people will be set free by the power of your spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Sister Don. Lord, through every part of her ministry, God, that you would use her, God. Lord, through teaching, Lord, through working with children, God, in every part of the ministry, God, we pray for your anointing upon your life in Jesus' name. Father, we pray in Sister Tina's life, God, that you would bring an anointing and empowerment of the Holy Spirit of Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, through these teenagers that she teaches week after week, God. Lord, that we would see the Holy Spirit move in this class, God. Lord, that we would see growth, God, numerically and spiritually, God. Lord, that lives would be changed by the power of your Spirit in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you will touch Sister Davis, God, that you will anoint her and strengthen God, Lord, in the ministry that she does, God, Lord, with working with her children, Lord, Lord, I pray for your anointing upon her life, God, Lord, that we just pray that you would have your way in Jesus' name, Father, touch Sister Shelly tonight, God, that you would strengthen her and empower her, Lord, with your anointing as she teaches in Sunday school, God, Lord, we pray for growth in this ministry, we pray for children to be saved, for children to be filled with the Holy Spirit, God, Lord, for children's lives to be changed by the power of your spirit. God. Lord, I pray that you touch Brother Johnny, Lord. Every boy and girl that he brings to church with that man, God. We pray that he will be a light to shine to them, God. Lord, that they will see the love of God in this life, Lord. We come to know you as Lord and Savior in their life, Jesus. Father, we look to everyone that's here. Lord, every Sunday school teacher, every children's church worker, Lord. Everyone that's involved in proclaiming the word of God. Lord, that they will teach your word with power and boldness under the anointing of your spirit, God. Lord, we depend upon you. We stand upon this truth. We stand upon your word. And if God be for us, who can be against us? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah to you. Hallelujah to you.
to your name. Now right now I want every choir singer, I want every musician, piano, organ, guitar, drums, I want you to come and stand in front of this communion table. And church, I want the rest of you to come and gather around this choir. This choir has blessed us. They have led us in the presence of the Lord tonight. And I want us to pray for them and let the Holy Spirit bless them and anoint them through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Right here in the middle choir. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for your anointing. We pray for your power, God. But Lord, you are able, God, to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask and thank God. Lord, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Lord, we pray that you'll anoint this ministry, God. That you'll anoint every musician. That you'll empower every singer, God. Lord, that a minister of the anointing of your spirit in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, as we worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, we pray that the name of Jesus will be glorified. Lord, we pray that your name will be glorified on the piano, God. Through our touch for the Shadoa today in Jesus' name. Name. That's for the James we pray, God. Anoint and strengthen and empower. Lord, touch for the coin tonight and Sister Don. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we pray for your strength. We pray for your anointing, God. Lord, let us never be the same again. But God, let us draw closer to you. Lord, let us surrender our will. Let us surrender our desires. Let us surrender, Lord, all that we are to you, God. Lord, it's not our will, but thy will be done. Lord, let us not be complacent. Lord, let us not be satisfied with where we are. But God, let us draw closer to you. Let us draw near into the throne room of God. Because it's at the throne room of grace we can find rest for our soul. It's at the throne room of grace we can be changed forevermore. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We praise you for your anointing. We praise you for that power. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you just take someone by the hand and agree together in prayer with them. And let's worship him where two or three are gathered together. In his name, he is there. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We worship you with spirit and in truth, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, you alone are worthy, Jesus. You alone are worthy, Jesus. As we are gathered up here at this front this morning, something that we have been doing on Thursday nights that has been very powerful in our Thursday night prayer service. As we have gathered up here at the front, we've joined together like we are right now. And at the end of our group prayer, there's always someone that wants special prayer and someone steps down where they are. They come up here in the middle and they, everyone else gathers around them and we pray collectively for one individual at a time. And if there's someone here tonight that you need special prayer. You need God to strengthen you. You need God to empower you. If I was you, I would come right up here at the front. This church will gather around you 100%. And we will pray for you. We will pray for God's touch of protection and power upon your life. Anyone here tonight, you say, I'm hungry for a touch of the Holy Spirit. I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. I don't want pain. I am. I'm so hungry.
as you go back to your seats, I'll talk to you for just a moment. We'll continue with our study on the book of Revelation next Sunday night. The Holy Spirit has touched us so great. You're in the service tonight. Many of you have heard the story, and I've told it here before. Some of you who may not have been here on that night, but it was in January of 1998. I had not yet been filled with the Holy Ghost. I was I was the sophomore, tenth grade adventure in high school, and it was on a Sunday night service. Back then, the church was probably running around 900 people. Nobody knew what I was praying. Nobody knew what I was down at the altar for. But I remember in that service, I was praying, and I had already felt the call of God to go into ministry. For many years already, I had already worked with nursing home ministry. I had been playing the piano for the nursing home services. I've been working with the puppet ministry since since I was in third grade. Many of you who was at the Valentine banquet, you saw that crazy puppet skit that we did on Real Love. That was our very first puppet skit that I ever did. I was in third grade. But I always knew there was something more. And every time I would go to the altar to pray, seek the face of God. Different ones would come by and shake my hand, hug me and say, Brother Daniel, God's got a work for you. I don't know what it was going to be. I had no idea. All I knew is that God was going to do something. Sometime. Somehow. Some way. And all throughout the next several years of my life, different areas of ministry, I believe God was preparing me for what He wanted me to do. But on that one Sunday night in January of 1998, I was down at the altar praying. And I said, Lord, if it's Your will for me to go into the ministry, I'm willing. I'll do what You want me to do. But I also said, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The evidence is speaking in other tongues. Because that's the only way we can make it in this world. We must be filled with the Holy Ghost. And just as I had said that, a dear saint in the back side of the church, I don't even know who it was. I don't even know if they're still alive today. But I remember all at once there was a message given out in tongues. And the interpretation said, You have asked me to show you my will for your life. And to fill you with my spirit. But I say unto you, read my word. Study my word. Surrender to me. And my will will be accomplished in your life. And I will fill you with my spirit. It's just a few short weeks later. February 22nd, 1998. About 8.30 that Sunday night. I don't even know what the altar call was. Our, our youth group had a tendency, regardless of what the altar call was, every time the pastor gave an altar call. Pastor Torn, who preached at our camp meeting, he always told us, it makes no difference what the altar call is. If you're hungry for God, get down there. He said, if you leave, go home empty and dry. It's nobody's fault but your own. So he instilled that truth into us. It made no difference what the altar call was. Every time the pastor gave an altar call, the, the youth group that took up half the middle of the church, they'd get up and there'd be a mass exodus of people from there down here to the front. The young people were so hungry, they wanted to get to the front of the altar before the adults got up there because they knew if they could get up by the platform, they'd get prayed for first. They were hungry. And I remember that night, I sat on the first or second row. And soon as... The altar call was given. I just got up out of my seat. I walked right down here in front of the pulpit and I just lifted up my hands. And I began to worship him. 
Brother Aaron Williams, who was here a few weeks ago, fixing to go to Germany. He was up at the front in front of me. He was praying for God to fill him with the Holy Spirit. I laid hands upon him. We began to pray together all at once. I don't know who went first, but both of us were slain in the Spirit that night. And I remember a dear sister of the church, Sister Dean Kerr, she came up to me. I was laying there on the floor just bawling, weeping like a baby. And she came up there, grabbed me by the shoulder, and she said, Come on, Daniel. Tonight is your night. God's going to fill you tonight. And for a 30-minute time, an hour, I don't know how long it was, but God filled me with the Holy Spirit that night with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I knew then that it was about to begin, that God was going to do something in my life. That somehow God was going to use me to reach out to people. And so at the end of my 10th grade year, I started talking to a guy that went to my church and who was also president of our uh, Christian organization there at the high school. He was graduating. He was involved with the bus ministry of Andrew and First Assembly. And I asked him, I said, do you need some help on your bus? I'm willing to help out. I don't know what God wants me to do, but I'll, I'll help you out on the bus if you need it. So I started going with him. That was really how I got heavily involved with bus ministry. Years ago, my dad was driving. I would go with him. Another lady in the church, Sister Paul, I'd go with him. But when I was in 10th grade, I began to go and knock on doors inviting people to church. And September of 1998, uh, the one that I was helping, he graduated high school, started going to school at Russellville. They needed someone else to take the route. 16 years old, the associate pastor called me in the office and said, we need you to be bus captain of this route. I don't recommend any 16-year-old being a bus captain today unless God has supernaturally called you to do it. But I felt like I had been called. So I remember, I didn't know what I was doing. All I knew to do is, they said do it, and so I did it. And so my mom took me and another guy from the church. We went out, knocked on some doors that day. That first weekend, we had 17 on the bus. I thought this is a good start. And so the next week, we went out. Started driving down the neighborhoods looking for houses that had toys out in the front yard. People probably thought we were trying to prey upon young children because we was just stopping at houses that had little kids outside play. And we knocked on the door, threw flyers on the doors. I don't know, we talked to kids out there on the street. Well, that next Sunday we had 30. And then the next Sunday we had 35. And I told the kids the next week we were out knocking on doors. We was out there on this little dead end street and I started telling the kids, they didn't know me, I didn't know them. But once I told them who I was and where I went to church, told them about what we do at the church, told them about the games, told them about the stories, told them about the fun that we have, told them about the music, it, it got their attention. And then I told them, I said, I want to make a deal with y'all. If y'all can invite your friends to come to church and if we can get 80 people to ride on that church bus on a Saturday morning, I'll let whoever brings the most visitors throw a pie in my face. Well, that got their attention, and they were excited. Well, come Christmas weekend, I had knocked hundreds of doors that week, and I told our associate pastor, I said, look, I'm going to run out of room on that bus. I need a second bus, and she didn't believe me. She said, do you know how many people you've got to have before we can get a second bus? I said, yes, ma'am, that's why I'm asking and so she said, well, we're out of buses. We can't get you another bus. I said, okay. And so we went out, started our route early. It took two and a half hours to run that bus route. We went from one side of the county to the other. 65 passenger bus, and we pulled in the church parking lot. The brakes were smoking. I mean, it was seriously smoking. And it was hot on that bus. 20 degrees outside, but it was hot on that bus. Why? 118 people were crammed on that 65 passenger bus ready to come to church. I had two buses going home, by the way, because we realized that was a that was a no-no. We don't do that anymore. But I'm telling you, when you let God 
used from church. What would happen? She's not even here tonight. She's deathly sick. Nobody, nobody in this church has bombarded Facebook and the internet any more than Sister Carol Oliver. She's, we haven't even started our, our campaign of knocking on doors. She's already knocked on doors. She told me the other day she found a family of nine people that wants to start coming to church when we start running the van. What would happen? How many people we have here tonight? 30. About 30. What would happen if all 30 people here, you found nine people that was ready to come to church? Nine people. 30 people here and then we all found to nine people wanted to go. This church wouldn't even be big enough to hold them all. And that's just the beginning. What would happen if we reached out to the one person each week? What would happen if, if two people got together and agreed to bring one new person next Sunday? I believe we would see God do a change in this church and shift this church in a, in a new direction and put us on the, on the path to growth and to put us on a pathway to revive. Because revival comes when we start seeing souls saved, when they're revived from the depths of sin, when they're revived from the things of this world. And so, let me get back to my subject. This is what happens when I'm not preaching from an outline. I adrift. But at the very beginning, when I was in 10th grade, I had no idea of what God had in store for me. Different ones that said, God's going to use you. God's going to do a great work in your life. Did best ministry. I, in my senior year, I was president of the Christian club there at the Van Buren High School. Had fellowship with Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterians, people all over camp, all over the city. We got acquainted with all the youth pastors. We had permission from the school board to do prayer rallies out by the flagpole. 300 people gathered out there one morning before school for a prayer rally. The, the school resource officer had to reroute the traffic in the parking lot because they couldn't get up to the parent drop-off area. God was moving in the school that year. Bus ministry group. I started teaching children's church. Then we moved to doing Sunday morning bus ministry. God did many works of that. But all throughout all of that, I kept thinking to myself, this is not where it's going to end. God is still moving me forward. He's still going to do something else. Some time ago, I was invited to go preach at a church in Arkansas. The pastor had died and they had asked me to come and preach. The church was about to dry up. They had about 16 members. And I told them, I'm going to preach. I said, but before I come, I'm going to send you a whole bunch of flyers, and I want you to go around town and invite people to come. Because I'm not coming just to preach to a few people. If you want me to come, let's reach out and reach out to this community. And so I went. We had 50 people on that Thursday night service. One of the deacons called me back the next day. Asked me if I'd be interested in pastor. I said, I don't know. I said, why, why do you want me to be your pastor? And he said, because when you came, we had a crowd. I said, you need to keep on looking. I said, I'm not going to come just so you can have a big crowd. Because I don't want to be the one that does all the work. It's going to take every single one of us. And so I said all that to say this. I had been offered opportunities many opportunities to go preach, to go pastor. I turned it all down for one purpose. The main reason being I was not married yet. I believe the pastor needs to be married. And I think God was kind of humorous on that by uh, granting that, by waiting until I got married before he opened the door. Alyssa and I got married October 13th. We hadn't even been married two months until I got a phone call from here at how Assembly of God. I'd already been here a couple of times to preach. Brother Coy called me, and I knew that time when my phone rang when he called me. I just had this feeling what he was calling me for, and it scared me half to death that I didn't even answer the phone. And, and I listened to his message, and he said, Brother Watson, I have something I want to ask you. And I had a feeling right there I knew what it was going to be, and I began to pray about it. And I felt the Lord say, Call him back and do it. If the Lord's in it, it's going to work. And long story short, a little late for that, but throughout all of that, through the last, tonight marks seven months 
seven months that we've been here. Johnny, it seems like yesterday we just had the, the, the business meeting and, and you elected us, but I cannot think of any place I would rather be. I cannot think of any other church that I would be blessed to pastor anymore than right here at Howe Assembly of God. We come here to be a blessing, but you have been a blessing to us. So listen, I, that's all we think about. That's all we talk about is what, what, what are we going to do at church? What can we do to see this take place? How can we reach this group of people? How can we reach this family? How can we do this? And we're constantly going over stuff. When, when we're back at Van Buren working at our jobs, she's constantly trying to figure stuff out. And we're working together. We're, we're constantly studying and strategizing, trying to see what we can do. And very soon, I'm going to roll out a plan for this church, a vision, and we're going to have it on, in September. It's going to be called Vision Sunday. And I'm going to put a challenge out to this church, and we're going to do everything we can to reach as many people for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not concerned about if we have room or not. God will supply. The Lord will add daily to the church such as should be saved. We're having wonderful services here. God is blessing this church. God is moving in our lives. God is blessing our website ministry. We've had over 2,000 people, 2,050 I believe, have logged in and have watched our services. What would happen if people who have watched these services, what would happen if they felt such an anointing from watching you worship? Believe it or not, people watch you worship. If you're in the choir, people watch you worship. If you're in the sanctuary, people watch you worship. What would happen if they see what God is doing in your life and they want the exact same thing to happen in their life? And they begin to come from far and near to be a part of these services. It can happen. Yes. It can happen. I believe it. And we have faith. And I believe we're going to see God do great and mighty things in this church. Can we stand together? The song we used to sing years ago in our outreach it said, We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes and then be gathered home. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. church in a great and mighty way. God, that we will see souls saved by the grace of God, that people will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Father, I pray that you will go with us now. Lord, we pray for your blessing. We pray for your light to shine upon each one and give us peace in the midst of every storm that we face. God, we pray that you will lead us through the pathway of righteousness for your name's sake. And Lord, we thank you for your never-ending love. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? He is worthy of all your praise. Thank you for watching today. If we have reached you, we would like to hear from you. You can visit us online at howag.com or you can write to us at First Assembly of God, P.O. Box 97, Howe, Oklahoma, 74940. We invite you to worship with us at First Assembly of God, Sunday morning Sunday school at 930, morning worship at 1040, Sunday evenings at 6, and Wednesday evenings at 7. We also invite you to subscribe to our online YouTube channel or visit our Facebook page. We hope that you can join us again soon for another service from First Assembly of God and how Oklahoma.